Okay, this soap pouch is really cute. Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Tiffany Hansen. Thank you so much for joining me today. In this video, I'm going to show you how to make the Pretty Simple Soap Cozy Soap Pouch. And this is honestly the most beautiful soap pouch I think I've ever seen. And I'm really excited to share it with you. If at any point in this video you do like what you see, please push that thumbs up button. And if you haven't yet, subscribe to my channel and click the bell. That way you get notified whenever I release a brand new video. I try to release a brand new video every single Friday covering a wide range of different types of crochet projects and you're not going to want to miss out. And every now and then I will slip a video in the middle of the week. And if you're not subscribed, you're going to miss it. So make sure you subscribe so you don't miss my videos. All right, so the Pretty Simple Soap Cozy Soap Pouch is going to go directly into my spa collection playlist. That way, I'm still building it, it's still growing, but they make for great gifts, especially for people that you don't know very well or people you know really well and they like spa stuff, <laughs> like yourself maybe. The creator of this particular pattern was crochetandcrafts.com. I found this off of Pinterest. So here is at the bottom of the screen, I'm going to give you the link website to this free pattern. So if you want, you can pause the video, write that down, go to the website, print off the pattern. That way you are ready to crochet along with me. I will also include the link in the notes section and the comment section. So all you have to do is click print ready to go. Let's go ahead and dive right into what materials you are going to need to make this pretty simple soap cozy. The materials that you're going to need to make your pretty simple soap cozy include 100% cotton yarn in whatever color that you want to use. I'm just using a very neutral color because this is going to go into my spa collection and neutral colors just seem to be very calming. You're also going to want a 100% cotton yarn that is a size 4 weight. There are 100% cotton yarns out there that are a size 3 weight and I just want to make sure that you get the size 4 weight medium worsted Aran size 100% cotton yarn. That way you can follow along with me in this particular pattern and get roughly the same exact size that I get. You're also going to want a crochet hook size H8 or 5.00 millimeter crochet hook, a pair of scissors, and optional is a row marker stitch marker to aid you in the process of getting from one row to the next because there is a step where you are repeating the same process through a number of rows and it can be helpful to use the row marker stitch marker to help guide you but I'm also going to show you another technique where I use my own yarn tail as my row marker to help guide me. That's all you need for materials. Once you've gathered all of your materials let's go ahead and dive right into actually making the pretty simple soap cozy. All right, to begin making our Pretty Simple Soap Cozy, there's actually two different ways that you can begin. The first, like I just mentioned, I'm going to be using the tail of my yarn as my round marker to help me identify when I have completed a round and began the next round. If you would like, you are more than welcome to use a row marker stitch marker instead, in which case you can begin with a smaller tail and be just fine. You would just create your slip knot, attach your crochet hook, and be ready to go. Because I am going to be using my tail of my yarn as my round marker, I'm going to give myself about a nine inch long tail, and then I will be creating my slip knot, attach my crochet hook, and now I am ready to go. To begin, we're just going to make six chains. One, two, three, four, five, six. Perfect. For round one, we are working in rounds, which means we're going to be working all the way around our foundation row. And in each row after, we're going to be working all the way around the work to create that pouch. So for round one, we begin by putting two half double crochets in the second chain from our crochet hook. Remember that the loop on our crochet hook does not count as a chain. We need to look at the V stitches. So one, two, and that second chain, making two half double crochet stitches. One, two, perfect. In the next three chains, we're going to be making 
two half double crochets in each chain. One, two, three, four, five, six. Perfect. You should be left with one chain left on your foundation row. In that last chain, we're going to make four half double crochets in that one chain. One, two, three, four. Great. All right, what we noticed with these four half double crochets is that it smoothly transitioned us to the other side of that foundation row where we will now start working on the other side of those chains. You should be able to count four total chains. So you have one, two, three, and four right there. What we are going to do is we're going to be making two half double crochets on the other side of the next four chains. Now with this row marker tail that I have, I'm just going to nudge it against the other side of the chain and I'm gonna crochet on top of it because I want this row marker chain to come out this other end, which indicates the beginning and end of each round. So next stitch, next chain, the back of that chain, I'm gonna make two half double crochets one, two, then the next one, one, two, third chain, one, two, and fourth chain, one, two, now that we have gotten to the end of this round, I'm going to take my row marker tail, yarn over, pull that tail through my loop, and then reinsert my crochet hook. If you are using row markers, you would just put that row marker in that very last half double crochet stitch there to indicate that was the very last stitch. All right. Next thing you're going to do is slip stitch on the top of the very first half double crochet to close round one. And that is what you should be looking at. Okay, so for round two, we are going to actually begin the V stitch pattern. This particular soap pouch, soap cozy, is working the V stitch pattern. You'll see like it looks like a corn rose or a wheat shape where it has V-stitch inside of a V-stitch inside of a V-stitch. So what we want to do to begin round two is we want to find the very first two half double crochet stitches. And that would be right here. See how there's two half double crochets inside that same chain? We want to work between those two half double crochets. So in order to get there, we need to slip stitch between those two half double crochets. So take your crochet hook and put it between those two stitches. We don't want to work on top of the stitches. We want to work between the two stitches. Slip stitch to get us there. Now we are there between the two half double crochets. We're ready to begin. Chain one. Make two half double crochets in that same space that you just slip stitched into. That was between those two stitches. Perfect. Okay, now look for your next two half double crochets. Okay, the next two are right here. See how there's two half double crochets inside that same chain? What we're going to do is we're going to make two half double crochets between those two half double crochets. So find them, yarn over, in between those two. Remember, not on top, but between those two stitches. One, two. 
Okay, next two, right there. One, two. Okay, repeat this process of making two half double crochets between two half double crochets all the way around until you get to your row marker or this marker tail. And I'll meet you there to show you what to do next. When you get to the four half double crochets of this corner stitch, just continue to look for the next two. So there's two, put two half double crochets between those two and move on to the next two and put two half double crochets between those two and move on. Okay, that's all you're doing for round two. So where is this? There we are. Two half double crochets, same stitch, making two half double crochets between those two. Great, I'll see you very soon. One, two, perfect. Okay, I've made my way all the way around round two. To stay on count with me, you should have a total of 10 groups of two. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. All right, that just makes sure that you are on track with me. We've reached the end where I have my row marker coming out. You might have your stitch marker right there that you just met up with. I'm gonna take my row marker yarn over, pull it through my loop, and that indicates we've just ended round two. If you would like, remove your row marker and place it in that very last half double crochet we just made. Slip stitch into the top of the very first half double crochet of round two, and you're left with your oval shape. Very nice, very cool. Okay, for round three, through round 11, the end of round 11, you're repeating the same pattern. You begin by finding your first two half double crochets. You want to get between those two half double crochets to continue this wheat or corn rose look where it's a V stitch inside of a V stitch inside of a V stitch. So look for that first two, there it is slip stitch between those two half double crochets, chain one, make two half double crochets between those two half double crochets, and then repeat all the way around. Find the next two half double crochets and make two half double crochets between those two. Keep in mind, you wanna make sure that your crochet hook goes between those two stitches and not on top of those two stitches, okay? And you're just repeating this all the way around. That's all you do for round three through round 11. I will meet you at the end of round 11 to show you what we do next. Perfect, so just to recap on how to make sure that you can count your rows, this first set of stitches, your round one, was all together, okay? So this was round one, and then you can count your Vs all the way up. So there's row two, round two, round three, round four, round five, round six, round seven, round eight, round nine, round 10 and round 11. Great, so let me go ahead and slip stitch into the top of the next half double crochet just to close off round 11. And now we are ready for round 12. For round 12, it's worked very similar to the V stitches that we just did. You're gonna look for the next two half double crochets, slip stitch between those two half double crochets, chain one, Make one half double crochet, just one, between those two half double crochets, and then chain one. Look for the next two half double crochets, your next V. Make one half double crochet between those two stitches, and then chain one. And repeat all the way across for round 12. 
So find your next two half double crochets, your next V shape. Make one half double crochet between those two stitches and then chain one. And you're making this new shape. Continue all the way around for round 12 and I'll meet you at the end to show you what we do next. Okay, last half double crochet here. Great, chain one. Go ahead and take your tail, yarn over, pull through that loop on your crochet hook and slip stitch into the very top of the first half double crochet stitch for round 12. And that closes our round 12. We are now ready for round 13. Oh, so exciting. For round 13, we're going to chain one, single crochet in that same stitch that we just slip stitched into. And in the very next stitch, the half double crochet stitch, we're going to make five half double crochet stitches on top of that one stitch. One, two, three, four, and five. There we go. Skip over that chain one space to the next half double crochet stitch and make one single crochet. Go to the next half double crochet stitch. So skip the chain one, next half double crochet stitch, make five half double crochets. One, two, three, four, five. Skip the chain one space. Next half double crochet. We're gonna make a single crochet. Okay, repeat this process where it's five half double crochets on top of the half double crochet and then a single crochet on the next, then five half double crochets, and then one single crochet, creating this scalloped fan stitch. And I will meet you once you get all the way around to your tail or your row marker to show you what we do next. And single crochet to close. Great, okay, I'm gonna take my tail pull it through the loop. You can move your row marker if that is what you were using. And then I'm just going to slip stitch on top of that first single crochet to close off round 13. And we are done with this part. Grab your scissors, sh cut short tail. If you used your row marker, then you will just yarn over and pull through the loop and pull for a slip knot. If you did use the tail of your yarn for your row marker tail, you can tie these two in a knot to secure. And then you are done with this part of the soap pouch. The last thing that we will be working on is the little drawstring that will slip in between all of these chain one spaces to close the top of the pouch up, okay? Take your yarn, if you want to use the same color or a different color, now is when you would determine that. I'm going to use just about a three inch long tail because I want to be able to weave in my ends and it's really hard to do that when we start with a teeny tiny tail. So begin with a slip knot, touch your crochet hook. To make the drawstring, we are going to chain 31 chains. One, two, three, four, 30, 31. Perfect. Next thing we're going to do is look at the back. So here are your V stitches. Turn this over and you will see that there's kind of like these chain links. What we're going to work into is we're going to work into that back chain link of each stitch. We want to start with the second chain from your crochet hook. So if you want to, you can just begin by looking at the front Vs. So first V, second V, turn that V around, look for the bump 
the back of that chain and we're going to make one single crochet in just that back bump. Next chain, one single crochet in the back bump. Next chain, same all the way down to the very end. So go ahead and work one single crochet in the back bump. So if you want the front, you'll see a V. In the back, you'll see the one chain. Work this all the way down this row and I'll meet you at the very end to show you what we do next. And last chain here. Perfect. Okay. Grab your scissors. You want to cut about an, a seven to eight inch long tail. Great. Yarn over your yarn, pull through your loop and pull tight for a slip knot. Perfect. If you want, you can even take these two tails and tie them together as a knot, but that's totally up to you if you want to do that. Now, before you attach these two sides, you wanna grab your soap pouch and you want to weave in your string that you just made in and out of those chain one holes and out and in and out okay make this go all the way around and last in and Right there, last one, out. You want the two ends to be going the same direction. You don't want one to be ending on the inside and the other ending on the outside. You want them both to be on the same side of your work, preferably both of them being on the outside so that way you can draw those closed, right? <laughs> and be able to hang, be able to hang this. Now that we have this woven all the way through, now we can connect the ends together. What I do is I take my crochet hook, insert it into the side that has the strings before I insert it into the end of the side that did not have any strings. Then I'll grab one of these tails and pull it all the way through. And I'll do that a couple times. Just okay, great. Once you have gone back and forth and really secured that string and these two sides together, just take these two tails, tie a knot, and I'll make a second knot. And then the only thing that you have left to do with your project is to weave in your ends and these ends right here. And your soap pouch is complete. All right, guys, so what do you think? I hope you had a lot of fun. I hope you love it. If you do love this, you're gonna wanna check out my other spot collection items in this video right here, or check out this video, which is just a recommended video for you to watch. Thank you so much for spending time with me today. Thank you for crocheting with me. I hope you have an amazing day, and I will see you with my next video. Bye, guys.